Welcome back to the next segment of our interview with Dr. Leo Panitch, Professor of Political Science at York University in Toronto and the author of American Empire and the Political Economy of International Finance. Thanks for joining us again, Leo. Glad to be here, Paul. So, uh, there's so many pieces to this financial crisis that one, one can break down and talk about, but, but one struck, first of all, with, with the issue of panic. Uh, so much of what's been doing is, uh, in terms of the bill, the rescue bill, bailout bill, however you want to label it, is about stopping panic. And, and at, at, at the bottom line is people lining up in long lines outside the doors of banks asking to get their money out because nobody trusts the whole financial system anymore. So there's that. And then there's what, we, what people are calling the real economy. And, and let's move to this issue of the real economy to start with, because if people had faith in the real economy, we probably wouldn't be such, seeing such chaos in the financial side of it. So talk about the fundamentals, which John McCain are say are, are, are just fine. Well, I think it is true to say that had the American corporate sector and American exports not done as well as they've done through the last decade, uh, this would be a, a far, far worse problem than it already is. It's act as a stabilizer. And that's to and, do with the weakness of domestic demand. Uh, it has compensated for the weakness of demand, best demand, but you know, American exports, partly related to the decline of the dollar, but American corporations have been able to take advantage of it, have been growing by close to double digit figures uh, for five, six years, which is quite remarkable. And corporations have been quite flush in ca cash, their profits have been relatively high. I'm talking about non financial corporations. And that has helped stabilize things. This is talking about outside the auto sector, of course. Uh, which is an entirely different thing. Uh, and that's been weak. So it means particular regions have been really hit, and uh, here in Ontario, uh, we've suffered from that. So that's been a stabilizer. At the same time, however, uh, this system has been kept going by consumer credit for 30 years. It's been kept going by workers expecting that when they get older, their uh, ho the value of their homes and the value of the shares that uh, their pension funds hold are going to be worth a fortune, are going to be continually going up. Uh, the entire and society is sitting around waiting to cash out, in exactly. theory. Most people don't get a chance, but uh, this cash out mentality. Absolutely. I, I, I heard this term the other, uh, 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 other day, which I thought was great, a liquidity event. Everyone's waiting for a liquidity event. For the liquidity event. event. That's lovely. Yeah. Exactly. And everybody had confidence in this growth of this asset bubble. Uh, that has been going on since the early 80s Except with constant crises in it. You know, with constant moments of crises, then the American state would come in and it would throw in enormous liquidity at the crisis like a helicopter and drop it in and then the thing would take off again. Well, what happened uh, this time was that it really began to unravel in a, in a serious way. And in such a way that uh, because it hit in the mortgage market and in above all, it's not surprising really, that portion of the mortgage market that was trying to integrate African American communities and Chicano communities, et cetera. Right. Well, this is uh, one of the points you make in, in your recent article, is that is that they needed and got sections of not just the middle section of the working class, but even a poorer section of the working class to buy into the cash out mentality. Yeah, well, get into a house with cheap money, sell it for a fortune later on, and everyone will live happily well, ever after. Well, in order to be fair, in order to sustain your uh, your income, remortgage your house, which a fair number of people did. You know, a lot of these subprime mortgages were not only get into it, although it wasn't that was also remortgage your house. Part of that was, if I remortgage my house, I can maybe add a room and then sell it for a hell of a lot more money. But part of it was that people consumed through that. So, uh, you know, this, at root, this has to do with the fact that American trade unionism was defeated 30 years ago, that the Great Society programs, which were oriented well, from the 1960s... Back, back up a step. In terms of trade unions being defeated, you're talking about how small the, the section of the organized workers have gotten. It's a question of militancy. That, that's one side and of it. stasis and wages. That there was a constantly declining portion of the American working class that was unionized. But it was not only that. It was that uh, the uh, ability to win wage demands uh, were, you know, was, was undermined uh, in a really serious way. Uh, and so even those that were unionized from the early 80s on 
uh, were suffering a stagnation in their wages. And a lot to do with this threat of cheap global labor. If you ask for more no. money, we're going to move our factory. That did, but it also mm. had to do with the kind of reactionary role that uh, labor boards played. Uh, and it had to do with the complete defensiveness and confusion of the American trade union leadership, uh, which, you know, had forgotten that they were dealing with a society uh, based on exploitation uh, and didn't know how to engage in struggle any further. I mean, really, it was quite remarkable. And just to remind and viewers, uh, if I, if I, and you tell me if I'm correct, but essentially uh, we've never, ordinary American workers' wages, and I don't, I don't think Canadians are that much better off, more or less at 1972 wage labor. So levels, people say, yeah. and I think it varies by sector. Uh, that, no, but their standard of living has not gone down. And Why has it not that, gone down? Because of credit. Uh, or because whole families are working, or because people are working much longer hours. Uh, so, I mean, that, you know, that's really what's happened. And, and yes, we've come up against the kind of crisis that uh, depends on people being able to borrow in order to spend. The borrowing goes through the credit system, goes through the banking system, whether it's through mortgages, through credit card debt, what have you. Uh, and this spills over to the real economy in the sense of, you know, will this seize up, this, this credit-driven demand? But not only that. But, but seize up because so much of the credit is to... Is to working people. Who can't really afford it. Yeah, but that isn't all. It also, of course, uh, while the non-financial sector has done relatively well, uh, they've got to be able to issue what is called commercial paper, even the big corporations, you know, through which in a short term getting into the money market, they pay their workers, uh, they buy supplies, etc. And the danger is, well, that seize up. Uh, or and, default. That, and that began or major, to look like major capital. corporate default yeah, on can, that too. Can, yeah, to some extent, that's that's been a problem. And so, the short-term money market, you know, non-financial corporations are involved in. Um, and then you see the problem of small, medium-sized corporations having trouble getting access to debt as the banking system. You know, they're afraid to lend. Uh, they don't know what calls are going to be on their money. They're like, they're afraid to lend money out. And this is the kind of thing that leads to a recession and can lead, it hasn't happened until the, since the 1930s, to you know, the equivalent of the Great Depression. Uh, that also brings in government debt. Not so much at the federal level, especially in the case of the United States, where people see the American state as the guarantor, it'll never default on its debt, et cetera. And that was kind of proven by the way they immediately nationalized, renationalized Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, because everybody took that as government corporations, even though mm. you know, there had been this privatization under Johnson in the 1960s. Uh, but the municipalities in the states uh, are having difficulty selling their bonds. Well, in the next segment of our interview, let's talk about the, what, what is the next uh, consequences of where we're at right now for cities, for states, and, and Canada, for provinces and cities, yeah. and the whole issue of what's going to happen to uh, these jurisdictions that are, uh, base their taxes on property if property keeps tanking. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, thanks to, for joining us. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Leo Panich on the current financial crisis.